This week on THA's Omnibus. Grief is really about phases. Some days you'll be good, some days you won't. Some days you'll feel on top of the world and some days you'll feel like, you know, you're in a pit and you can't come out. So I want to encourage people that as they go through phases to be compassionate towards themselves, to be gentle and to always reach out because social support is really what people need to help to bear the weight of this heaviness of loss. Support is what helps a woman, a family, um, people that are grieving overcome the, the loss that comes with losing an, an infant, whether it's miscarriage, stillbirth or a neonatal death. And so to, today I'm hoping to help to break the silence, to normalize this. One in four women would experience some form of infancy or pregnancy loss. The founder, Makita, is my cousin and she was very supportive of Hannah Rose and I when we went through our loss in 2022. Even though it's naturally a painful experience for men as well, I think, you know, as a man, it's really hard to fathom how painful of an experience it is for the woman and the mothers who go through that experience and community is extremely important so, so the awareness for me raising the awareness through the organization is equally as important as the individual help that it gives to the people who go through those experiences uh, having the experience myself uh, it showed me a depth of pain that i think only others who have really experienced it could really know and so it's really a healing thing to be able to connect with other people who could relate to the experience. We know that we cannot be silent anymore. It is time for us to speak. The international team this year is Together We Care. It is centered on the message that self-care is the most important integral way to show we care. In fact, it is essential if we are going to be able to raise awareness and speak out about pregnancy loss. Kendall Green Market. We have, of course, the Fresh Produce Market. We have several activities geared towards engaging the patrons, like the tree planting, a trivia competition for different age groups. Uh, the grand prize is a model layer pen. Also, we have uh, confectionaries on sale. We have agro processors who have their wares out. So we have a lot of diverse, different activities and offerings for the public today. I have six flavors at the moment, which 
main signature is the Dashin Campari. It's for the men who really like to go, up, go at it. And I have a, a punchin mixed with puffy, which is another signature. I have a pumpkin carrot peanut, I have sea moss, I have beetroot, I have dashin, and as you go on. Well, actually, it's the first event that I have ever taken part in. Um, I find it's a good, it's a, it's a good product, mainly for the, the country residents. So, I mean, here we go. If I don't know if it's the first time, but it's the first time for me, but I am welcoming it as it goes. I decided to participate because I'm a small business entrepreneur and I would like my business to get out there. So I think it's a good initiative to take part today. Those here are the best sellers. That's cheap, cheap. That's how we grew up in our grandparents' time. The bene balls, which normally make it sesame seeds or bene seeds, and the popper ball, which is make it popper. Okay, some um, I think some other people call it um, popper candies. Okay, all the items sell pretty well, but those are my three best sellers. So far, we, we've had good responses. A lot of people are interested in the trivia because they want to win the prizes, of course. Uh, we have a pair of rabbits. We also have eggs as prizes, right? Um, a lot of people are interested in the eggs, but that is particularly because of the price, as we all know. So the response has been good in general. Well, I bought some um, some tomato seedlings, some poppers. I also bought some um, some pak choy and a couple of other ornamentals. It's always a good idea to grow your own food. Some people might be reluctant to take that step forward because they don't understand the initial steps to take. So, so more training in that respect so that you could open up the, 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 the ideas and so on for, for, for the local people so that they would be not afraid to, you know, even sow their own seedlings. Uh, I do farming, so, so it's not strange to me. So far, I like what I'm seeing. It tells me that the future is bright for Tobago. <laughs> We have a biodiversity day at Corbin's where we invite the public to come and learn as much as possible about Tobago's environment and about all the creatures, plants, trees, you name it, we are here to learn. So we have a lot of folks from the university, um, lecturers, professors, doctors in exploiting the various areas, some moths, some butterflies, some bats, birds plants and they are here interacting with the young people and teaching each one of them the importance of biodiversity. Oh, we've been so pleased to see so many people come out all different ages from not just from very local but from all over the island to you know enjoy the biodiversity here learn more about what they have at Corbin's and partake in all the activities and displays we've had so it's given us a great opportunity to showcase the project and tell more people about you know how great the biodiversity is around here. Our community members and the school kids are making just as much of a contribution to the project and to our knowledge of biodiversity which is amazing and it's great because then they get the excitement of that of, of having done that but the scientists get the data so it's a win-win situation. So BioReach really is conservation of the biodiversity and also to be looking at agroecological practices in landscape in agriculture landscape and so Today, we, the component that we're dealing with is biodiversity data gathering. There are several components to it, which we will talk more to later on, like land use planning, agroforestry, reforestry, those are other components that will take place. And I must say that the Barrage project is a project funded by Jeff, implemented by the FAO, and the executing agencies are the Environmental Management Authority and NAMDEFCO. The, some of the finalists from the Soka Titans competition came and they had a training in interviewing skills for TV, radio, etc. Um, it was facilitated by the Avian Parks of Info Department and it was quite informative. It seems as though all the young men who were here today um, learned something and they seem to be quite engaged in the process. Every interview will not be the same. Every scenario will not be the same. You have to research the platform. If Marshall didn't research, you think he would have got a just like this? 
But the nice of the shorts still represent soca artists. The more prepared you are, the more comfortable and confident you are going to be. We found that some of our artists, although they are very good at um, you know, performing on stage, sometimes when we put them in front of a camera to do like little TV interviews and radio interviews, they don't sell themselves in a way that we need them to sell themselves. And I think it's because of a lack, a lack of exposure. Now, if you don't have experience, then you would not have the exposure. So in order to create that, we decided that it was important for them to at least have some training skills, have some one-on-one -on -one sessions that will help build their capacity so that when they do have the opportunity, then they'll be able to speak with confidence and, as you said, tell their story. What I will do is just do a mock interview with each of you. We'll, we'll record it and we'll show it back here. What have your preparations been like for the Soka Titans? It is a challenge because the Soka, the Soka Titan, you know, it is a challenge for me because it's the first year I end up in the Soka. I want to challenge them guys and them. But um, so far it's going good. Well, I find he was very good in the sense that he was potent in what you're saying. Yeah, he, he was good. Um, only one thing is that he wasn't watching the camera. Oh, was he? He, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess he was watching uh, Adrian. <laughs> I like the confidence. Um, he, he had a confident approach to the the interview. It's a wonderful experience. It's nice to see Signal Hill alumni and uh, music amateur Stephanie Joseph, all the, all the different performers here today. It's a beautiful mix of uh, 
Tobago performers in terms of choirs especially? It's just a joy to have experienced. It is a wonderful thing to have been a, a you know, part of the audience just to take all that in. And, you know, I am just grateful that I made the trip. Um, of course, you know, St. Lucia is, is a... Is a, is a few minutes away from here, but but it is a very, very beautiful thing to have experienced. Choir fan and supporter of, of course, of good singing. So I really appreciate so far what I've heard and I'm enjoying this, the, the musicality, the, the, the volume. <laughs> I'm enjoying everything about it and just looking forward to more. No need to ask, he's a smooth operator. That has been a production of the Department of Information, Tobago House of Assembly.